little bit about my life. See, it was the most surreal thing. Finally wanting to live again, but realising I no longer knew how to. This world is so different to the last one I knew, like someone photoshopped me in but forgot to airbrush me smooth. I woke to two new family members I didn't know were due allowance to swear in front of my parents because the sound of my voice was a breakthrough. I used to be a chameleon, now I'm the elephant in the room. My body is a prison with a chief that won't listen in mate for life. No chance of parole or escape plans to come into fruition. People look at me like they can catch it. Maybe they can, but I'd argue more likely that they don't understand. If only they understood that they don't understand, that would lend more of a helping hand than wrapping me in bubble wrap and sending me in paddy package into a secure room where I can be manned. I'm not mental. They're judgmental. Yeah. I'm not mentally ill. I'm mentally intriguing. And there's something very beautiful about being yeah. mentally intriguing. I'm not talking about how sometimes I forget how to breathe in without counting. I mean the ability to tap into another dimension that some people will only ever dream in. When I'm mentally intriguing, I know how to behave. Trying to act normal feels like someone turned up gravity and it's sucking me through the floor into an early grave. Maybe I see the world through fanatical eyes or maybe some of you open theirs up to desirable skies. My head is in the clouds, not because I'm high, but because they hang low and because climates don't compromise. When I'm left cold and without light, though the sun remembered to rise, I'm reminded if I don't meet expectations, I am not obliged to apologise. Like that time I found nothing plummeting from a 14,000 feet skydive because happiness isn't real and neither is fear that in your mind. Yeah! The mind being the most powerful tool you own, which is why the enemy fights you there, because it's where it gets you alone. How can I feel everything and nothing within one breath? How can I feel empty, yet simultaneously as heavy as my dad's eyelids after a bottle of red? Forget monsters underneath mine, spoon me in my bed, body's exhausted, ready to sleep, but the memo didn't make it to my head, maybe. The problem is, it's midday, and I'm forcing myself to sleep, and not because I'm tired. But so something may have changed when I awake to pull me out of this whimpering heat that seemingly there is no reason for me to be in my body. Feels stronger than it should ever have had to be, yet still. I'll speak to you with the honesty of a child, if with the delicacy of one is how you treat me. If I was screaming because I trapped my finger in a door, it would be easy to feel sympathy. But trapped inside my own head, the instinct is to criticise and flee. But please, try to imagine feeling so anxious that the sound of someone parting their lips makes you feel you could rip your eardrums out with ease. Or the texture of loved one's words make you bite because they torment your teeth. But all your clothes touching you the wrong way will leave you twitching for weeks. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at my irrational response and allowing my life to become this bleak. Someone else's inspiration to live when I'm still on a 4 to 3 ratio myself each week. Suicide is selfish. It's not an opinion. It's wrong. What's selfish is expecting someone to live for you when their pain is excruciating and they feel they can't belong when I don't hesitate on a bridge. I'm gonna race for life. When oxygen I need to survive suffocates me, I feel like I belong in outer space. I am rough around the edges and straight through the middle. My language is encrypted and my actions contort as riddles. It's like I developed a sixth, seventh, eighth sense for things that don't need to be sensed. My large intestine is a spitting cobra releasing venom that leaves me temporarily blind to the present tense. My skin is worn out like me. Baths became an overused comfort, like tea. I never drink decaf, and I do that for me because despite what doctors have me believe, no one was ever diagnosed with something off the back of lack of decaf coffee. Don't let me fool you into a false sense of security. I think too much to be logical. But writing makes you feel happy. No, writing makes me feel, full stop. So I load my pen with pain, and I feel because this is what happens when mental intrigue reaches fever pitch. We create something that makes the pain appeal, and there's something to be said for a rhyme to help people believe that something is real. The day I began to lose my mind, I began to find myself. Yeah. That is when I realised it is okay to ask for help. Even if it means waking someone up, self-sabotage is enticing, but it is a relief when someone interrupts. See, two steps forward and one step back is not a royal fuck-up, it is still one step forward. Yeah. The bad with the good, and I embrace my disordered and awkward now. I look forward to tasting that first tea of many in the morning because it means I've made it through another night. Progress is progress. 
regardless of how slight. Thank you so much. Yeah.